Racing is a presentation of WGN Sports. It's no secret that pitching problems have plagued the Sox in the second half, but no one's throwing in the towel. The Sox hit new lows last night with Sean Lowe and Lorenzo Barcelo stepping up big in the Sox victory. Today, Ken Hill makes his debut for the good guys, and here's hoping the Sox keep throwing around the leather and the lumber for another win over Baltimore. It's all next over WGN. We are coming to you from Comiskey Park in Chicago, Illinois, where this afternoon, WGN Sports is proud to present White Sox Baseball. It's a big hurt. Frank Thomas, Carlos Lee, Max Ordonez, and the Chicago White Sox as they get ready to rumble with Albert Bell, Brady Anderson, and the Baltimore Orioles. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the beautiful city of Chicago. With the Feisty and Darren Jackson, I'm Ken Harrell. Since we get set to bring you the finale of this brief two-game set in the opener last night, Sox took it 8-4 to four behind some fine pitching from Sean Lowe and the first Major League victory for Lorenzo Barcelo. But this afternoon, another story. Yet another story unfolds that on that mound for the Sox. Ken Hill. Well, the tenth different starter of the season for the White Sox. That's exciting enough. But Kenny had problems in Anaheim this season. His arm really did not ever really loosen up for him. Since he's been here, he's worked with Herm Schneider and stretched it out a little bit. He said it's feeling good. He had the one pitching outing in uh, Charlotte. So he threw the ball well there. Hopefully it'll just continue on. He's feeling healthy. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. It'll be Ken Hill against Jose Mercedes, and we'll be back with the rest of the starting lineups right after this. Chicago White Sox baseball on WGN is brought to you by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Your local Ford store. Quality people. Quality products. Clark. When it comes to great gas prices, Clark is the real deal. Your Toyota dealers, leading the way every day. And by Southwest Airlines. Log on for Southwest Airlines low fares at www.southwest.com, a symbol of e-freedom. Welcome back to Comiskey Park for the finale of this two-game set. As we mentioned, Sox 8-4 winners last night over Baltimore. And right now, let's take you to our center field scoreboard for our White Sox Sonata. Chicago White Sox. And as they take their positions, let's check out the starting lineup. Well, the Baltimore Orioles handed in by their skipper, Mike Hargrove. Leading off in left field, it'll be Brady Anderson. Jerry Harrison will play second and hit second. Shortstop, Melvin Mora. Cleanup hitter, the DH, Albert Bell. In right field, it'll be Jeff Conine. Batting six at first base, Chris Richard. Brooke Fordyce will do the catching. Mark Lewis will hit eighth. He'll be at the hot corner in the ninth position. The center fielder, Luis Matos. Defense for the Sox in the outfield from left. Carlos Lee, Chris Singleton, Mags Ordonez around the horn. Herbert Perry, Jose Valentin, Ray Durham. The big hurt Frank Thomas in the battery of Mark Johnson and the 34-year-old veteran. Right-hander, Kenny Hill. Hill making his first start in a White Sox uniform. In his major league career, as you look at his numbers, in that angel uni, in his major league career, Kenny has won 117 times. He has lost 107. He is 1-0 this year against Baltimore and 2-2 two and two lifetime. So the veteran out of Lynn, Massachusetts. And DJ, you know, when we saw him earlier, when he kept the ball down, when he located the fastball, he was okay. But he's got to locate the fastball to make the splitter effective like right there. Well, that fastball down in the zone from Kenny Hill is the effective pitch that he needs. You're right. If, it is, if it's getting up, he's in trouble. Well, as you saw those last two pitches right there, he got him up and out over the plate. But we're glad he's here. 
So he's 6'2", 215 pounds. And let's check out the men in blue behind the plate. It'll be Mark Wegman, Jim Reynolds at first, Jim Wolf at second, and Charlie Williams, who called a good ball game last night, over at third. So a beautiful afternoon here in the beautiful city of Chicago, Illinois. So happy you could join us for White Sox baseball right here over WGN Sports. As Hill has concluded his warm-up tosses. But the one thing we commented on his last outing against us when we lit him up pretty hard was the fact he had decent velocity, he had a decent splitter, except he was just throwing it a little too hard. Well, Kenny, first of all, used to really throw a good fastball about 93, 94. I don't know if he's getting it up there in that same range anymore. But when he does, and locating on the corners the way he used to, like we're saying, after that it sets up all of his other pitches. So Brady Anderson gets set to lead it off. By the birds, this is the 10th meeting of the year between these two ball clubs. In the first nine, the Sox have won six of them. Anderson hitting a 251, 16 homers, 41 RBIs. He was one for five yesterday, and that one hit was a homer. So the first pitch of the ball game, there's a strike. Alfield playing him just about straight up. And the count 0 and 2. Orioles hitting at 274 as a club with a 5.69 ERA. Coming in with that mark of 55 and 70, 15 games behind the Yankees, tied for fourth in the East. Baltimore pretty good at home at 34 and 27, but on the road, 21 and 43. That's a pretty good pitch, didn't get it. And the count one and two. Anderson's had pretty good success against Hill, 14 at bats, six hits four of which have stayed in the park. Fastball high. That on the gun out there at 94. Yeah, and the one on the screen at 92. So he's got a little pop on it. It's good to see. And the count goes full. Now talking with Kenny a few days ago, he said, if it hadn't been the White Sox, that he may have just packed it in and gone on home. Well, sometimes when you've uh, been bouncing around a little bit later in your career, it's got to be the perfect situation for you to continue on. Payoff pitch. Not hit hard, but it's going to fall for a base hit as Mags gets over, cuts it off. Anderson's going to give it a shot. Here's a throw off the mark by Mags, so the leadoff double by Anderson. He is now 7 for 15 lifetime against Hill. 18th two-bagger. Well, that really stems from Kenny getting the count full and then throwing a fastball down the middle. And it was up a bit. Well, that's what he did against us out there. We mentioned his, his stuff was pretty good, but he was 1 0 2 0 2 1 3 1 3 2. So here's the second baseman, Jerry Harrison. He'll be trying to get him over. Harrison at 217, three homers. Two of those have come against the Sox, and he's driven in five. One for four last night. And that was a home. There's the bunt. Hill's just going to take it. So the sacrifice won free. Here at Comiskey Park, 347 down the lines, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center field. Now the Sox bring the right side in, and Valentin will wind up in as well as the shortstop, Melvin Mora, comes to the plate. Mora, there are his numbers, 297, 41. Looking at Kenny Hill for the first time. Breaking ball downstairs. Outfield slightly to the left. Bit of a gap in right center. Has the pitch way outside and it's 2-0. Oh. Well, you faced him. You've seen him in the past as we have. When Hill was just really tough. When he was 0 1, 
One 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 two. That pitch out of play. All speed get out in front of it. But the big pitch we talk about a splitter the big pitch still is that fastball he has got to locate it. Well the hitters have to be worried about his fastball and the minute that happens and it opens up up his off speed stuff. I know because. When I used to face him and he was able to throw that fastball down and in where he was located in perfect spots. I knew I was in trouble because I chase his splitter. Three and one. Orioles last night hit four home runs in that ball game and lost it eight to four. Three one pitch. Good location right there by Hill. So a full count with Albert Bell on deck. And another thing, as you can see, he gets away with a 3 1 fastball on the outer part of the plate, pretty straight. But he's working the ball in, and Mora thinking the same thing. He gets you thinking in there down and in, and all of a sudden you can get away with some mistakes away. The payoff. Fouls it back. And to make room for a hill on the roster, in case you have not heard. Sox option Kevin Byrne. To Charlotte. Checking in with Mark Johnson and once again trying to figure out how to pitch out of this first inning jam. Here it comes. Ate him up. Ray's going to come to the plate and they get him. Beautiful play by Ray. Bare hand makes the throw. Anderson didn't think so. And here comes Hargrove. Two out. Well, you know, the thing that happened right there is Brady Anderson looked like he slid into home plate and his front foot. Came up in the air and never actually touched the plate while Mark Johnson put the tag on him. Ray made an outstanding play, barehanded and fired at home, taking a chance there on a bang bang play. Mike Hargrove might be sitting there saying, Don't assume the play before you see it, because it looked like, you know, at first when the catcher starts to reach out, that it might be an easy out, but from our angle, it looked like he was going to be in there. Well, I, I looked, I saw it the same way you did, DJ. There's a great pitch by Hill, not to let that go unsaid. And here's a nice play by Ray. Now watch his front foot up in the air. Right, right there. there. Now the tag is put on. A good call by Mark Wagner. Yes, it is. His foot was there in time. Meanwhile, no contact with home plate. Down and up. Right over the bag. Right over the plate. And the umpire's right there on it. Great call. So here's Bell. Albert 0 for 4 last night. 279 average, 22 homers, and 92 driven home. Bell has faced Hill 14 times in his career. He has one hit. The thing about Kenny is he can be a little slow to the plate at times. Ooh, Bell had a good pitch to hit right there underneath it. Play one more time. Right there, down, up, not on the plate yet. Tagged him. Well, that's sticking with the play by the umpire. Yeah, he, in fact, it was just the opposite of what Argo was probably arguing with him about anticipation. He stayed right with it. I think more than anything, Mike was just, as there's a strike, was just trying to protect Brady Anderson. Uh, he's sitting over in the dugout. He didn't have a real good view of it at all. No, I mean, and if, if you get a good look at that play, which we did, it looked like the play was going to be—he was going to be home easily. Yeah. But the minute that leg kicked up in the air, forget about it. Well, his foot hit the ground, and then that's when it bounced up. So many umpires do not stay with that play; they just go ahead because the guy is in the vicinity of home plate already. They just go ahead and call him safe.
The 0 2 pitches. The runner takes off. There's a throw. And they get him. And Mora's upset. Meanwhile, after a half inning of play, it's Baltimore. Nothing. And the good guys coming to bat. No score bottom of the first and let's check out the starting lineup handed in by the skipper Jerry Manuel leading off at second base Ray Durham Jose Valentin is short hitting third the first baseman this afternoon Frank Thomas cleanup hitter and right Max Ordonez Harold Baines will bat fifth he'll be the DH El Caballo Carlos Lee in left Herbert Perry in that seventh hole he'll be at the hot corner Chris Singleton in center and batting ninth doing the catching Mark Johnson Oriole defense in the outfield Anderson Matos Konai. Around the horn from third, Mark Lewis, Melvin Moore, Jerry Harrison, Chris Richard, and a battery of Brooke Fordyce, and the 29 year old right hander, Jose Mercedes, making his 13th start. And this is 29th appearance. He is one and one against us this year, and two and two lifetime. Well, Mercedes out of the beautiful, beautiful spot called La Romana in the Dominican Republic. And what's he going to feature, Feisty? Two seam and four seam fastballs, slider, and a straight changeup. The changeup, though, does have some movement. Well, here's Ray. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours. First pitch down low. Durham hitting at 284, 14 homers. He has driven in 60. He was 0 for 2 last night, but he scored three times. Mercedes that real definite hesitation at the top of his motion that pitch on the attempted bunt fouled away. Race had a tough time against Mercedes one for 12. Well that's why you see him up there trying to put down the bunt. Mercedes just has something in his motion that throws Ray off through an outstanding game against us last week eight strong innings did Mercedes. That's high. Well, in the six-game homestand, Ray in the first five has led each game off by reaching base. And to count three and one. Sox with that record of 75 and 51. 24 games over. Seven games in front of the tribe who they'll be hosting Oakland at Jacobs Field. Sox 36 and 25 at home. Hitting at 291 as a club. Pull a string on him right there, and the count goes full. They also last evening picked up a couple of stolen bases, numbers 20 and 21. And that's ball four. So all six games in this homestand, he has let it off by reaching first. And in one instance, third. And right now, let's check out our picks to click. And you see, Bill Moore, Skip Ellis, and our director and crew, and Frank Thomas, DJ, and Sylvia Jackson are going to go with Harold Baines. And the Sparrow, Aaron Urban, and the Ron. Ron Luciano and I are going to go with Carlos Lee. Here's Valentin, hitting at 289, 21 homers, and 78 RBIs. He also tries to bunt it and fouls it off. Our guys are trying to get that ball right down that third base line, fair or foul. As Mark Lewis is standing up on the grass and trying to take it away from him, they're still trying to put it down. Well, on the first strike, it's right what you should be doing. You either make it a perfect bunt or have it go foul. And as that count goes to one strike or two strikes, if you're going to be bunting with two, you just got to put it in play. Uh, we saw Chris drop down about with two strikes Was it yesterday or the day before and he got it done helped us in a big way it was yesterday and the error into center field on the throw by the pitcher the chopper two hopper Harrison and they don't turn it as Ray down on his knees now slowly gets up Ray Jerry Harrison. 
gets rid of that ball in a hurry at second base. Uh, Ray was all over him too. He's going to clip his legs before he gets rid of the ball, and he still makes the accurate throw. So here comes Frank. Frank hitting at 341, 38 homers, 119 driven in, three for four last night with a couple of ribbies. Two for eight lifetime against Mercedes with a homer. Nice pick by Fordyce. I was just talking a moment ago about the error on a pitcher last night on Chris Singleton's bunt. Sacrifice bunt in the error. The Orioles have committed an error in 15 straight games. An organizational record so far. Well, historically, you know, I've been around a long time. But even prior to that, the Orioles were known for their defensive prowess. Well, they're having their problems lately. Still quite short of the amount of the errors the Sox have made. They come into this ball game committed 93. We have committed 108. Two balls and a strike to Frank. Just a decent lead now by Valentin. This should be right here. Valentin yeah. goes in, can't break it up. Six to four to three, and that'll do it. Nothing across after one, no score. No score, top of the second. Albert Bell will lead it off. He was at the plate when Mark Johnson gunned down Melvin Mora at second base. There you see once again the numbers on Bell. And checking some action around the American League. Bottom of the fifth in the Bronx. Yankees leading Texas 8-5. to five. Bottom of the fourth in Detroit, Tigers three, Mariners two. Later on, Boston taking on the Royals and Cleveland hosting the Oakland A's. Indians. Been playing some good baseball lately. Carlos Lee. Goodbye. Makes a catch. One down. And here's a reminder about Comiskey Park scoreboard messages. It's a $30 donation to Chicago White Sox charities. It's perfect for birthdays, anniversaries, and special events. For an additional $15, fans may buy a color 8x10 photo of the message. For details, call 312-674-1000. Yeah, the Indians on a five-game winning streak. As Jeff Conine stands in. Jeff at 275, 12 homers, driven in 39. Three for 17 lifetime against Ken Hill. A little bit low, says Mark Wegner. Over the National League, one game in action right now. Top of the seventh, it's Energy Field. Reds leading the Phillies 5 to 2. 3 0. Later on, Montreal at LA and Atlanta hosting the Cardinals of St. Louis. Come back and get it, Kenny. There's one. That's ball four, so the first walk issued by Hill. And there you see Sean Lowe, last night's spot starter, making his first start in almost two and a half years. Last time came back in May in a Cardinal uniform. Through the three solo homers, two of those coming in the top of the fifth. 
And then Lorenzo Barcelo coming on, picking up his first Major League victory with some outstanding relief work. So here's Chris Richard getting a 253, five homers, and he has knocked in 10. Takes that pitch just off the corner. Richard coming over from the Cardinals for Mike Timlin. Got a hanger last night from Sean and hit it out of here. 3 2. Get me over curveball, Sean featured, and he didn't miss that one. There goes the runner. So Conan picks up his third stolen base in five attempts. I mentioned earlier, Kenny is not that quick to the plate. He's fairly quick over towards first base, holding the runner on, but once that foot starts up, he takes a little while before he gets rid of it. The 2 0. And it's 3 0. So he fell behind Conine 3 0. He's behind Richard 3 0. Alfield playing him straight up. As you see, Brooke Fordyce on deck. So back to back walks coming with one out here in the top of the second. Got Hill in a jam. Mark Johnson wants to go out and bond a little bit. Uh, Ken, at start down in Charlotte, four innings, seven strikeouts, no walks. Right now, got the opposite working two walks, no strikeouts. That's not to say he can't get dice right now to roll into a double play. Great concept. Brook hitting at 307, 10 homers, and he is knocked in 34. 0 for 4 last night. But he's been swinging a hot bat. Takes that pitch up high. Well, Brook Fordyce swinging the hot bat, but at the same time, when it's a count in his favor and he's looking for a fastball, he is really dangerous. Yeah, Carlos Lee made a real fine play on him last evening. As the count, 2 0, and here comes Nardi. Looks like he is just a little quick inside that windup. Yeah, that arm is getting up and releasing fairly quickly. He's got that little short reach back and to the top and let go, but he's a little quick with it right now. Thirteen pitches this inning and just two of them for strikes. That's what we talk about so often pitchers. Especially young guys. But even veterans occasionally when they get out there. Most of your veterans who have been successful have plan B. Well, Nardi going out there just reminding them hey. You know what you can do throw the ball over the plate don't start aiming it. There's a strike on the corner. And as usual, Nardi goes out. Then immediately the pitchers respond. He sees something and they they take to it quickly, whatever he comes out and says to him. Yeah, sometimes it'll be something mechanical, other times it'll be just, just something positive. And that's downstairs. Jammed him. Good pitch in on the fist. Ate him up. Jose. Two down. Right now, that's what you call being effectively wild. Kind of missing out of the zone, just missing away, away, away. 3 1 count. He sets up outside, and then look, Brooke Fordyce can't react. Looking for a fastball, but just not right there with something on it. Well, it's like we were talking last night with John Parrish. Left-hander from Baltimore. You can't zone him in and reel him in. Here's Mark Lewis. Been a good fastball hitter in his career. Takes the strike. And you 
Tennessee against Hill. Market 235, couple of homers and 15 RBIs. A breaking pitch way low and away. Well, the Sox will conclude this game. It's showered up, all cleaned up, get on their plane, go from here to Fargo, North Dakota. Why? That pitch foul back. Well, we got some we got some email about that last time we went out there on why we stopped in Fargo. Well, we stopped out there to refuel because White Sox have so much equipment, such a heavy load on the plane. We have to stop there, refuel, and then fly on into Seattle. So the Sox will have three in Seattle, three in Oakland. What a beautiful place to fly into. Two on, two out, the one-two pitch. That ball hit deep in the left center field. Singleton on his horse, looks up, and takes it off the bottom of the fence. So both walks that Hill has issued will score, and it's 2 nothing Baltimore. It's a slider that catches the middle of the plate. Mark Lewis kept that front shoulder closed very well and just crunches it off the bottom of the left center field fence. Chris Singleton and Carlos Lee were nowhere in the vicinity. The ball was hit very high. You think somebody have a chance to run under it? No. Chris was playing him in and over, as was Carlos. The one strike away from getting out of it. Meanwhile, two up go the Orioles. And here is the center fielder. Luis Matos takes a strike. At least just 21 years old. There are his numbers. And a count 0 and 2. Kenny Hill behind in the count to Brooke Fordyce. 3 1. Got himself out of a jam, made a pitch, and he popped it up. Then ahead. Of Mark Lewis, one and two, and then makes a mistake and has to pay for it. Now, the best part about this two runs so far here is just in the top of the second. We never worry too early. Very too early. That's popped up right side. Big Frank. He'll make that catch. That will retire the side. But the two walks cross home plate on a double by Mark Lewis. And after an inning and a half, it's the birds by a pair. Right now, let's take a look at the White Sox upcoming games brought to you by Pepsi AC. You see tomorrow we'll be in Seattle. It'll be at 9.05 here Central Time on Fox Sports Net Saturday, 8 o'clock, WGN Sunday, Fox Sports Net again. And then we start in Oakland on Monday for a three-game series. And that schedule is brought to you by Pepsi AC, Hawks favorite. Can't go on the golf course without them, especially now with my new golfing partner. Are you insinuating that I gave you heartburn? Yeah. Yesterday at Medina you did. All right, well, let's not bring that up. <laughs> I love those beautiful trees there. They love you too. They were just waiting on you. Oh, uh, they were. They put me in jail a whole bunch yesterday. Two nothing Baltimore, bottom of the second. It'll be Ardonia's Baines and Carlos Lee to face Jose Mercedes. Mags at 336, 25 homers. 106 driven in. All speed pitch to change way high, but way out in front. Mags one for four, as you see last night. Three ribbies. Three for five lifetime against Mercedes. On the corner in the count, nothing in two. Now 
Maglio taking two off speed pitches and not even close to being on either one of them. Off the end of the bat up the middle Mora's there up with it very quick Boy, quick release by Melvin Mora one out. And. Our system is up and running. If you want to email us and have a little chit chat during the course of this ball game. Log on. As Harold Bain stands in. Harold at 263, 11 homers and 37 knocked home. And if you want to email us, here it is. Email Hawk and DJ, Sox TV at ChicagoSports.com. Good rip by Harold underneath it. In that Yankee 8 5 lead over Texas. That's in the bottom of the six in New York. Glenn Allen Hill is at number 12. That's odd. Detroit leading the Mariners 3 2. Bottom of the fifth at Comerica Park. Edgar Martinez is at number 31. Two and one to count to Bainsey. Out in front, chops at five. What is it? 12 homers and about less than 60 at bats? Right about 60 now. Yeah. You could say Glenn Allen Hill. He's got himself a nice home run swing. Powerful man. Get that home run here with the Cubs on top of the roof across the street at Wrigley Field. A little chopper three hopper, Harrison. So two gone. And here comes Carlos Lee. First pitch strike. Carlos one for four lifetime against Mercedes, one for four last night with the Ribby. 21 homers, 80 RBIs. Start us off, Sealy. Let's get some two out. That ball hit hard. Nice pick by Harrison. Sets, guns in time. Good play for Jerry Harrison. And a 1 2 3 inning for Jose Mercedes. And after two, he leads it by two. Two walks last inning by Kenny Hill and then the two out double by Mark Lewis on a one two pitch. Played at both of them as Orioles go back to the top of the order. Brady Anderson, Jerry Harrison, Melvin Mora. Anderson doubled. Takes that pitch outside. And the count two and oh. Three and nothing. Kenny just can't find that slot. Well, this is exactly what Kenny needed not to do. Oh, the leadoff walk. The dreaded Bob. Dreaded base on balls. Well, we're sitting here today hoping that the White Sox can get in a great situation with Kenny Hill. Getting something going at the same time, we wish the best for the Sox and Kenny Hill. We want him to be able to catch lightning in a bottle right here and get it going again. We'd really love to see that. Now, once again, there's nothing wrong with his, uh, his stuff. But it doesn't make any difference how good your stuff is. You can't get it over the plate. 
And here's Harrison had a sacrifice bunt. In the first. Brady Anderson decent lead. Has that pitch up high. Well, the thing that's amazing is that he's not missing by a whole lot but he's missing. And falling behind in the count and that's when it becomes dangerous for him. There's a strike. A little small Bronx cheer comes up from some of the crowd. Not a big crowd on hand this afternoon. Sox averaging 25,181. A little bigger lead now by Anderson. He is 13 for 21 in stolen bases. Orioles have 89. Steals on the season. Sox have 92. Now a little bigger lead by Anderson. Breaking ball. Hill wanted it, didn't get it. Well, the most stolen bases by Anderson in the career is, I mean, in one season is 53. So he is at one time been a speed burner. There he goes. Nope. Fake. Good fake. That ball hit into center field. Singleton coming on. He's there. Makes a little slide. Put some leather around it. And that's out number one. Pretty good fake by Brady Anderson. Here's a reminder to visit the Majestic Athletic Hall of Fame gift shop on the main concourse and the gift shop on the upper deck level behind home plate on your next trip to Comiskey Park. So here's Mora with Anderson on third base in the first inning. One out. Sox had the infield in. Hill made a great pitch. Just exploded his bat. Little ground ball to Durham. Barehanded it. And they got Anderson at home. From the Mets, 28 years old, as he takes that fastball high off the plate. Bigger lead by Anderson. Long set by Hill. Kills the momentum as there is a an attempted bunt foul back. Good job by Kenny to hold that ball that much longer. Brady could not time him. Then he went a little flat footed and Kenny went to the plate. Held him at first because of it. That have a look good on me. It would. Yeah. Okay. Well, one thing about not throwing strikes and walking guys is just very, very tough. As we talked about last night, only fortunately last evening was on the other side of the page. Oriole pitchers walked nine guys, five of them scored. As a Count moves to two and one. This makes it tough defensively. You have to really, as a defensive player, Icey, you've been out there that many times and had this happen as I have. It just you really got to push yourself to stay on on top, staying into the game, so you can get a good jump. Well, today we see our guys with that posture that the Orioles had, you know, sitting back a little bit. That ball hit hard, but foul. 
Guys got a little bit of a slump in their shoulders. And when the action slows down, so does their feeling for the game. They kind of stand around a little bit more, whereas it's going fast. You're on the balls of your feet, leaning forward, waiting for some balls hit at you. Just kind of keeps you going. Anderson, now a little bigger lead. And once again, Hill's going to back it down. Well, there's just everything that's like a residual effect that comes along with base on balls, especially when the guy, you know, a little slow unloading to the plate. You get guys can run a little bit out there because you walked him now all of a sudden. Just hard to maintain any tempo to the game, any tempo to your rhythm. So one bad thing begets another. Well, we got some begetting going on. <laughs> yeah. Because the tempo right now is no tempo. Crawling. Yeah, it's no tempo. There he goes this time. That ball hit deep. Left field, Carlos going back, back, back. At the wall, he can't make the play. Ball gets away from him, so Anderson's going to score. Moore on his way to third base. Here's a throw by C. Lee, not in time. And it's a 3 0. Baltimore leads. So now all three guys he has walked have crossed home plate. Well, Carlos went a long way for that ball. It's hit very high, but the wind is carrying it, carrying it away from him. At first, couldn't tell if this ball is going to get out of here. Carlos ran a long way. What happens here at the end, he's, he's going to hit this wall hard with his knee. Right there, his right knee jams into the wall. He's going to hobble away after that ball. That knee is killing him. See him grimacing. Couldn't get to it fast enough to keep Mora from getting into third. Just because there's padding on that wall doesn't mean it, it's not going to hurt when you hit it full out. I've done that before. Now, once you go past that cushion part, and it stops. Nothing but hard behind it. Now the right side in. Valentin halfway as Albert Bell comes up to hit. He popped up to see Lee and left. Low and away. And there's a base hit. It's 4 nothing Baltimore. So that dreaded leadoff walk leads to two more. Well, right now, the enthusiasm and everything on the side of the White Sox is non-existent, and it's mainly because of the tempo of this ball game. Kenny is putting guys on, and he's not very deliberate to the plate, or he is very deliberate to the plate. And everybody kind of just sits back. He's keeping the runners close. And you can just feel everybody's just out there. Not really uh, into this game at this moment. Need some fireworks for him. On our side. There's a base hit by Conan. So he walked and scored. Last inning. And uh, locals becoming a little restless right here as Marty Contreras out. You saw Mark Burley getting up to start throwing. So as Nardi makes his way out to the mound, let's pause for station identification. This is WGN Entertaining America. Darren Jackson, Ken Harrelson from Comiskey Park. Second of this brief two game set. Sox won the opener last night, 8 to 4, but trail here 4 0. Top of the third inning with one out and two on. And the first baseman, Chris Richard, the hitter. He also walked and scored last inning.
Takes that pitch low and away. So the tenth starter for the Sox this year, Ken Hill. And what we're seeing right here also is something that only from a, a veteran stance rather than a rookie stance as a count two and up. We're seeing guy with pretty good stuff out there this afternoon. Just can't get it over. And I don't care if you're playing against Valdosta State, Georgia Southern, wherever it is. If you're going to pitch 2-0, 2-1, 3-1, -one, chances are you're going to get touched up. And the count three and nothing. And here's an interesting email here from David Pearson. It says, I am a senior at the University of Iowa and have been a Sox fan for as long as I can remember. I was curious about your thoughts on the rotation going into the thick of the pennant race. It seems as though there has not been a solid staff since Cal Eldred's injury. And David, you are right. That was a big hurt for the Sox. That'll load them up. You know, when that injury popped up to Cal Eldred, what were your thoughts on it? Aaron? Well, my thoughts were it was going to be all right because the guys had been doing a very solid job all around him. But it's kind of funny because when Cal went down, it seems like everybody else had a bit of trouble following him. And that was my thoughts exactly. I, I thought everything was going to be okay. I thought that everything could be maintained, so to speak, until he could get back on the active roster. But it has not come to fruition. The staff really has been very well, it has not been solid, let's put it that way, since the injury to Elvin. So Kenny Hill will depart in his first start in the Sox uniform. He works two and a third, and we'll be back. A dejected Ken Hill. Who works two and a third, giving up four runs earned on five hits, four walks. And thus far, three of them have crossed home plate. Runners on, all three of them, his responsibility as Brooke Fordyce will come on to face 21 year old Southpaw Mark Burley. So Mark, got to try to figure out how to escape this jam, hold him right here, and let the Sox bats hopefully come alive. Still got seven pops out. First pitch curveball strike. Look at a 3 1 count last inning. Got jammed and popped it up to short. Well, overcoming a four run deficit is not that big of a deal for the White Sox. But you're right, right here, this is as big as it's going to get. This is the out we need. On the corner and the count 0 2. Sox packed with. Birds, Bell, Conai, and Chris Richard. Johnson way outside. There's a base hit. Not a good pitch right there. Off speed. A couple of more going to score, and it's 6 0. 0 2, hanger. That doesn't work. That's it. That's just right down the heart of the plate. Dice is only going to hit it off the end of the bat, but that's all he needs to do to drive in two. Well, here's Mark Lewis had a two run double last inning They're coming with two out. Now getting back to the email from David Pearson senior at the University of Iowa about the injury to Cal Elder. That just seemed to break the continuity of our starters. But the Sox, as much as they have struggled since the All-Star break, are 20 and 19. As we speak, 24 games over the 500 mark. Two and one the count. To Mark Lewis. So on one side of the page, bad news. On the other side of the page, 
This goes to show you this is still a, still a very, very solid ball club. What you're talking about there as a comeback. Take your time. He will. They'll turn it. And they'll do it. But the Orioles put that big crooked number up there, scoring four times after two and a half. They lead it by a half a dozen. Not good here in the bottom of the third, but it is the bottom of the third. Seven pops at them. For the Sox, it'll be the lower third of the order. Perry, Singleton, and Johnson to face Jose Mercedes. Texas trying to come back in New York, hitting in the top of the eighth, trailing the Yankees eight to seven. Seattle hitting in the top of the sixth, trailing the Tigers four to two. Pitching matchups for that Seattle series starting tomorrow night. Mike Soratka against Aaron Seeley. Now that game will be over at Fox Sports Net. And on Saturday, Rocky Biddle against John Halama. And that game will have it for you right here over WGN Sports. And on Sunday, James Baldwin against Freddie Garcia. And that game will be over at Fox Sports Net. First pitch way high to Herbert. Yeah, the numbers on Gator. The Gator was 0 for 4 last night. We need him to go 4 for 4 today. That's booted by Lewis. So the leadoff man aboard. I'll include that as part of the 4 for 4. He's on base. He just let that ball eat him. He needed to just take a little half step forward. Need to pick it on the short hop. Here's Chris. Keep it going. Sox were very opportunistic last evening. Capitalizing on the base on balls. There's a bunt. Jose has got to hurry. What a play. And they just do get him. Boy, I'll tell you what, there is a play by Jose. Well, Chris Singleton just put down about a perfect bunt. Jose Mercedes full over to the line, bare hand, turn, and throw a strike. And Chris Singleton does not run slow down the line. All in one motion. Uh-huh. Well, that's exactly what it took. And a very, very close play. Well, here's Mark Johnson. Pick him up, Mark. We got to get on the board. Fakes the bunt. Lewis playing back, well back at third. And also, we got a group of 80 people from Price Waterhouse Coopers here this afternoon. Joe Inet, 74 years young, watching the game, and has a lot of his people in attendance. He's there as a strike. Pulls a string on him right there. Good motion. Mercedes against us in Baltimore on the 14th, 10 days ago. Eight innings, giving up just one run, seven hits, three walks, five strikeouts. But those numbers are not even indicative of how he just dominated that ball game. Well, so far, they're two and a third, pretty similar. Johnson called out on strikes. Well, back door. Cutter right here. Right uh, where Fordyce is mid. So here's Ray. He walked to lead the ball game off of the Sox. And now Mark Lewis comes in on the grass at third outfield around to the 
left gap and right center. Comes back with a fastball, grabs a strike. Mercedes fastball usually right around 88 to 89. But once he gives you all that motion of his with a change and all that motion of his with a breaking ball, when he does spot it, especially if he really locates it well, to the eye of the hitter, it looks a lot quicker. That's downstairs. Well, he doesn't throw anything straight. And then he gets guys catching themselves in between speeds, late on his fastball. Out in front of his changeup, just seems like he doesn't back much up. It's just changing every other pitch. Yes. Sammy Ellis, Brillo, quite a pitcher in his day with Cincinnati. Ray didn't like that call. Two and two. Also have the mayor of Valparaiso, Indiana, and a group of city employees at the game this afternoon. So far, it has not been a a good start. It's fouled over off the. Gatorade buckets. That thing could have hit that bucket, ricocheted on in the dugout, caught somebody flush. Instead, counts right back towards Ray. The Sox, his luck is about to change. I love it when you analyze. John Garland talking to John prior to the game today said his arm feels really good. Yeah, he said Hermie got in there, and Schneider got in that. Forearm and really worked it out well. As Ray knew that was there, and that'll retire the side. Second strikeout for Mercedes, and we'll go to the fourth trailing by a bunch. Top of the fourth inning. Luis Matos. Luis Matos will lead it off. And then he'll be followed by Brady Anderson and Jerry Hairston. Breaking ball, no. And a happy birthday to Cal Ripken Jr., who's 40 years old today. That's out of play, right side. Like they got on the board. Cal Jr. got his first big league hit off our own Dennis Lamp. August 16th, 1981 in Baltimore. A few since then. There's a one hopper to Herbert. One go. And a reminder, Saturday, September 2nd. The first 5,000 fans attending the game will receive a White Sox rally sock courtesy of the Bank of Business and American National. The tickets call 312-8311 Sox. Here's Anderson. He doubled in the first. He walked and scored in the third. I guess that saying up there on the board of first big league hit by Ripken, which is a quiz from the other night. Guys that played in the 70s 80s 90s and 2000s we said maybe Cal Ripken but obviously not no I, it was an 81 I thought it was 82 first year. there's a strike Albert Bell will be 34 tomorrow I just turned 32 who did me boy Ray I was watching Ray on that pitch all right, I may be kidding. Ray was upset that that pitch right there was not called a strike. So it was on me. And the count three and one. I just said I turned turn 32. Jack Gould over here gave me the look. 
All right, 37. There's a breaker grabbing a strike with it and a full count. Are you done? Uh huh. He walks him. So the first walk issued by Burley comes with one out here in the top of the fourth. And here's the second baseman, Jerry Harrison, sacrificed bunt, and then he looped to center field. We got some Sox fans. Matt Fitzgerald and Grady Wheeler out in Portland, Oregon, just emailed us. Diehard Sox fans. They're taking an extended break here at work to catch the telecast. Hi, guys. That curveball low. Ball strike. Here's another one from Gina Locasto. Gina writes, as a diehard Sox fan, I'm really tired of all the negative press these young guys are getting lately. They're 24 games over the 500 mark. This is a good team. What is your perspective on this? I agree. 1-1 one, one pitch. In the right field. Can of corn from Mags. And two out. I don't know if it's necessarily negative press. It's just press right now where they're saying we don't know. That's exactly my point. That's exactly my perspective on it. Gina Lacasto, I think it's born out of doubt and out of the real factor, a little fear. Something that Sox fans have become accustomed to over the years. I told you earlier, I think. Before this thing is over, is Anderson with a pretty good lead. First pitch strike to Melvin Mora. He's one for two, an RBI triple last inning, and he also scored. I think the lead is going to be extended rather than contracted. Once they settle in a little bit. Oh, he just ate him up right there. Jose's got a hurry on the move. Over to Big Frank, and that'll do it. Nothing across after three and a half. It is still six nothing Baltimore. Bottom of the fourth inning. And we got some work to do. But we got some time to do it in. Six more pops as Jose Mercedes taking his warm up tosses. For the Sox, it'll be Valentin, Thomas, Ordonez, Baines, Lee, and Perry. Maybe that'll get us one or two. Or three or four would be nice. All right. Then after Perry, it'll be Singleton and Johnson. Back to the top of the order and ready. Whatever it takes. That's Just four. As long as we only play eight and a half. Jose hit into a 6 4 fielder's choice. First pitch strike. Lewis even with a bag off the line at third outfield just about straight away as that pitch off the plate. Turn him around, Hose. Well, they didn't like that call. Well, the Sox hitters having a little problem with Mark Wagner right here. Uh, I think they're having more of a problem with Jose Mercedes. That's my call. Mercedes is making some pitches that are right on the edge of the zone. And the pitch foul away. Get another email here from Barb Strachan, who's a Toronto Blue Jay fan. Says, Watch you guys up here in Toronto over WGN all the time. Last week you were talking about a player 
named the Milkman. Sorry, can't use that name as that was the nickname of Claire Alexander who played for the Toronto Maple Leafs. High pop up. Fordyce fighting the sun, fighting the wind, makes the catch. Crowd number one. So no milkman. Okay. That's gone. Good. He really was a milkman in the offseason. So P.S. Don't forget to vote for Carlos Delgado for MVP. He's going to be the first triple, triple crown winner in 33 years. <laughs> well, he is definitely right there and on the verge of becoming that. Well, here's our candidate right here. Barb Strachan. Frank Thomas. As that pitch is hit into center field. Now going over towards right where Conine is there. And quickly two gone. And by the way, Barb, the reason we did call Herbert Perry the milkman is because he owns a dairy farm himself. Yeah. He has milked a few cows, filled a few pails down in Mayo, Florida. Here's Mags. Mags grounded out to Melvin Mora. Now Carlos Delgado. Second league in hitting behind Garcia Parra, who's at 369. Delgado at 366. Delgado tied with Big Frank for the home run lead with 38. Delgado 115 RBIs. He's in third place. He is six behind Edgar, four behind Frank. Delgado has scored 103 runs. Leading the league in total bases with 327. Oh, there's no question about it. He's got 46 doubles. That's leading the league by five. Carlos having a just an outstanding year as the big hurt is as well. And one thing about it, I think the Sox go ahead and finish this thing off in the East. And Toronto can't, I was checking in the Central, and Toronto can't do anything in the East. And I think the deciding, the deciding vote's got to come on the club and where they finished. Well, usually that's what it does come down to. Who actually helped their team win more? Yeah, win more than the other guy. And right now, you got to say that it's Frank Thomas, considering we're in first place and Toronto is trying to fight for a playoff spot. Mags got out and around that one, hooked it over into the Sox dugout. And once again, if you want to email us today, right now, we may have a chance to interact with you. Email Hawk and DJ, Sox TV at ChicagoSports.com. High end to left. Anderson going back on the track. He just missed it, but it's a one, two, three inning for Jose Mercedes, and we're into the fifth, trailing by six. Our Southwest Airlines tail of the tape. Sox still looking for their first hit. We've only had two base runners, a walk and an error. As Albert Bell takes ball one. He's one for two with an RBI and a run scored. Now one for six in the series. Final now from Synergy Field Reds over the Phillies, eight to three. And one thing about it, if you're talking about different places and different positions, different leads. As we speak right now with St. Louis taking on the Braves down in Atlanta later on. St. Louis, you would say, with a comfortable eight game lead in the National League Central. Is that a fair statement? That's a fair statement. Well, as we speak right here, Sox with a seven game lead over Cleveland. So you think that's comfortable? Well, you know how I feel. I don't think anything is comfortable. I'd like to stretch it out to 13 or 14. Oh, that's a walk away. But it's just again where you're located, where you're situated, and what your affiliations. 
And perceptions are pretty good pitch right there. Didn't get it. Come on. Well, that's exactly right. The way you put it in that perspective right there. It's just a matter of what people are used to being around and yeah, that's not winning and so it makes you nervous when you start to lose a game here and there. Chopper. Moses got it. One go. And while we have a moment, let's check out what's coming your way right here for WGN. They married for better or for worse. Now, the worse has begun. Victoria Principal's being stalked by her ex-husband. The abduction. Tonight at 8 Eastern on WGN. Jeff Conai has walked, scored, single scored. Takes a strike. Change up off the plate. As we mentioned, the Cardinals, seven game, oh, check the eight game lead over Cincinnati. That pitch foul, and that'll be a souvenir right side. San Francisco, a two and a half game lead over the D backs. Atlanta, a two and a half game lead over the Mets. Seattle, a three and a half game lead over Oakland. The Yankees a three game lead over Boston. There's another foul ball as we mentioned the Sox as we speak a seven game lead over the Indians. So what you're saying is there's two teams that have comfortable leads and that's it. Got him on the outside corner. Replay right here of fastball that just catches that outside corner. Conine looking out there like it was a little too far. Obviously not. Here's the first baseman, Chris Richard. Walked twice, scored once. Sox have issued five walks, three of them across the plate. And as the count moves to two and zero, oh. hey, I like this guy right here, Richard. Yeah. What do you like about him? I just like his, his demeanor at the plate. I like the way he. There's a strike. In terms of major league experience, just getting a touch up. Got a quick bat. You're right. He's, one thing about him is demeanor. He plays up here like he knows he belongs up here, like he has the ability to get the job done. I can see now why Baltimore made the deal to St. Louis to acquire this youngster. Not this time. The old equalizer. That'll get them all. Chris, don't, have, don't worry about it. A lot of guys have been there. One, two, three inning for Burley. Halfway home. Not good. And it's time now for our Ford snapshot because we've been getting a lot of emails about Frank Thomas and Sammy Sosa and this year's home run race. Have two players from the same city ever won the home run championship in the American League and National League? The answer is yes. The last time, 1956, when Mickey Mantle hit 52 homers for the Yankees, also won the Triple Crown. And Duke Snyder for the Dodgers hit 43 to lead the National League. And by the way, the last time the same city had two MVP winners was back in 1959 with Nellie Fox for the Sox and Ernie Banks for the Cubs. Garnered those honors. We're trailing six nothing here in the bottom of the fifth. Besides having no runs, we have no hits. Today is our first day of school. <laughs> well, school is in right here at the ballpark. Jose Mercedes holding class. Well, he is definitely carving himself out of for the second time in a row against us. An outstanding performance. Harold takes strike one. Oh. 
Ground ball. Harrison stayed with that one nicely. And that's out number one. Here's a reminder to visit the arcade section of the WhiteSox.com. Check out the newest cool games, Triple Play Trivia, Cyber Skipper, and Degrees of the White Sox. Here's Carlos. Jerry Harrison also made a nice play on him. Jerry Harrison throwing some weather against the Sox. He made a play in Baltimore off Max Ardonias. Saved him the ball game. He was reminded out there a little bit at second base, the way he's played against us. The way he looks, you know, in the field. Roberto. Yeah. Roberto Alomar, he's covering some ground out there just like him, making the plays, big, exciting plays. And he's hitting against us. And he's got some of the mannerisms of Roberto. Not unlike, you know, Carlos Guillen, the third baseman for the Mariners. I mean, everything he does, it looks like he emulates the guy who plays right beside him. A Rod. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to imitate somebody, pick out a good one. Yeah. Now, why would you want to imitate somebody who's 220 hitter, three or four home run? Just because you like the way he stands at the plate? Yeah, you know, that's what I realized at first when I was trying to emulate you for a while. I said, wait a minute. I know one thing. That didn't take long. I better get out of this groove. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's our first hit. So you can cancel a postgame show. All right. We get a chance to show a positive replay by the Sox right here. Carlos Lee, 3-1 fastball. Boom. Line drive left center. Thank you. And here comes Herbert. He reached on an error by his counterpart, Mark Lewis. Little tardy right there on a nice pitch. Good fastball from Mercedes. Well, Mercedes hasn't had to pitch out a stretch very often today, so and that little slide step, long arm, and looks like he's going to be slow to the plate, and he runs it in on you a little quicker than you were expecting. A high one and one. Yeah, Frank and I were talking about it the other day. That Carlos sometimes will change bats too often. And sometimes that can hurt again because it will change the plane of your swing if you get a, a bat with the arrow. That's going to negate the base hit and retire the side. Second twin killing turn by Baltimore. Good pitch by Mercedes, and we'll go to the sixth. Six nothing, bad guy. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago White Sox and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago White Sox. It'll be Fordyce, Lewis, and Matos to face Mark Burley. First pitch strike. Fordyce one for two, but it was a two-run single back in the third. Burley had him 0-2. Hung him up. All speed pitch. That's chop foul. You know, talking about Carlos Lee, Frank, we're talking about guys changing bats. You see somebody on your club that's really swinging the bat very well. All of a sudden you say, hey, I'm going to try that bat. Close pitch didn't get it in the count one and two. And what we say, sometimes it will hurt you because it will change the plane of your swing. Handle might be a little bigger, the weight might be a little more, or a little less, whatever it may be, rather than your own model that you have been using. That's off the end of the bat, change up. Most guys, as I can go, we get some guys with putters or drivers, or what, they'll stay with those things as long as they can until things really get in dire straits. And then they might make a change. 
But just to change for the sake of changing sometimes can be harmful. Well, I had a couple of models that I had and I stuck with pretty much on a regular basis and that was it. I knew the feel of those particular right. bats, the handles, the weight, the balance, and uh, to leave that feeling, yeah, it can throw you off just a little bit, and I didn't like that. And that's all it takes is just, just a hair. That pitch foul down. Occasionally, though, I did when I was in a funk because of what I was swinging. I'd go to something different out of necessity, but that was the only reason, not just to do it because. Well, yeah, but that was when you were really, really in a funk. Full count. Texas hitting in the top of the ninth, trailing the Yankees eight to seven. Seattle hitting in the top of the eighth, trailing the Tigers five to two. Mariners have lost nine out of their last ten ball games. As he walks the leadoff hitter. Well, the sixth walk issued by Sox pitching, and that'll bring up the third baseman, Mark Lewis. Well, right now, the Sox came into this day game at 23 and 23. So, what's your explanation or your logic for the Sox being only a 500 club in the day and 24 over at night? Well, Maybe they have trouble sleeping before these day games and you know, come to the ballpark a little tired. Who knows? It's got to be something. Third ball low. What about you? What's your feeling? I have no clue. I have played on clubs that most of the clubs that I ever played on, for the most part, played better than the day. Hmm. Or I don't know what the records were. I'm just, you know, that's a recollection. That could be erroneous, but. To me, it seemed that way. I know I love to play in the day. That fastball out of play right side. I think it had maybe it has a little something to do sometimes with certain compliments of players collectively. Well, I know day games. I really preferred to play night games myself because it did. I was used to staying up later after a night game and sleeping in in the mornings, and it just threw me off. Close pitch didn't get it in the count two and one. Well, were you a. For the most part, do you like to sleep in? Yeah. Yeah. And if it's funny because if I knew I had to get up for a day game, I didn't sleep as well anyway because I knew I had to get up. Well, I have, like you, I also have played with a lot of players who absolutely hated to play in the day. <laughs> well, Necessity is the mother of invention. Well, the funny thing is, is there's, you know, out of a 162 game schedule, there's probably what, 30. Oh, well, right now we've got 46 day games, so there's about 50 day games on the season at that. So there's got, some things that I do miss about, you know, when I first came to the big leagues almost 40 years ago in 1963. I, I miss the, the Sunday doubleheaders that were scheduled. I used to love to play doubleheaders. I miss the Monday that's popped up into center field, Chris Singleton. I, I miss the almost automatic off days on Monday. Well, that is an error long gone of the. Oh, yeah. Well, you can't have those doubleheaders anymore because, you know, obviously economics of the game don't allow it. Yeah, those uh, those days you can you can have them. I don't like them, especially now that I'm sitting up here next to you, and those double headers. We've done one this year. Those are not that easy to do from up here in these seats. Wah wah wah. Wah. I'd have much wah, rather been down on that field chasing the ball for eight hours. Matos can't get it upstairs in the count. Zero and one. Six six and one for Baltimore. Zero one and zero for the Sox. You know, I remember that doubleheader very vividly. It was just recently, and how you made me work twice as hard that day because you so forgot you to take your Geritol. You know, you. It's been a while since I've been around a guy that I love, which I do love you, man, but who cries as much. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. 
You are just a funny man. <laughs> Everything's got to be perfect. <laughs> no trees on All the right. fairways. Well, that's understandable. <laughs> Short holes upstairs. Food's got to be exactly perfect temperature. Yeah. At least I eat my food within a legal time frame. Well, I got to tell viewers out there, I have been around a lot of people in my life. I have never seen a guy who eats as fast as Darren Jackson. It is absolutely unbelievable. And he doesn't look like he's eating that fast. He just doesn't chew. That's popped up. Foul. And that's going to be out of play. Almost like he just inhales it. Who taught you to? Who taught you to? Sylvia didn't do that, I know. Well, no, but I mean, there's a difference between you and me. I eat with my teeth in. You take yours out and chew your food. <laughs> I just gum it, huh? <laughs> two and two. Somebody, somebody taught you how to breathe through your ears. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's foul straight back. Count hangs at two and two. Not yet. Well, still will not find this booth. Well, that one was going right at Bobby Mazur and Jack Gould. I know Jack would have made the play. Save Bob, big Bob over there. Curveball on the short hop. Slight bobble. Meanwhile, controls. The peg over the first, two gone. Here's a reminder about Family Half Price Mondays. It's every Monday home game. All tickets are half the regular price. Next Family Half Price Monday is September 4th when the White Sox take on the Texas Rangers at 105. For tickets, call 312 831 1 Sox. Did Lasorda teach you how to breathe through your ears? You know, Tommy Lasorda, good man. I love, I love Tommy. I was watching him yesterday in a little interview. He's going to be heading up our Olympic team. And by the way, the Sox have two members on that Olympic team. Matt Ginter and John Roch. So we're well represented there. But Tommy's not going to go there, as he said. We're not going to go 6,000 miles to lose. Just as you would expect, Tommy want to give it all he's got. Tommy taught a lot of guys to breathe through their ears. Well, not not myself. As you well know, we have lunch all the time. I eat rather slowly, actually. One one, fouled away. Anderson has double walked twice, scored once. In that four game set we had in Baltimore, Brady did not play because of that wrist. So it might be recurring and jumping up on him right here. But one thing about Brady Anderson in his career, he has played in a lot of pain. Played that one stretch a few years ago when the Orioles were in the hunt with some cracked ribs. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, That'll get your attention. It's kind of hard to do anything on a baseball field with a cracked rib. We just saw Mike Hampton went down with the same thing, and he's out for a little while. He's gone. Good breaking ball from Burley. And that'll do it. After five and a half, it is still Baltimore by six. We got to do something. Unfortunately, that guy out there on that mound, 60 feet, six inches away, he's got a little something to say about it. Jose Mercedes. Mercedes has not run a whole bunch of pitches up there, but he's made some good ones. Giving up just that one hit. Chris Singleton will lead it off. And here's another email. This one just coming in. What is the name? Oh. Horsey and Hoot. off the plate says what exactly does it mean when you see the no pepper games sign behind the plate in some ballparks 
You want to explain that, Feisty? Yes, I will, after this pitch. It means the grounds crew do not want you tearing up behind home plate, hitting balls and throwing balls up against the back screen and the grass area behind home plate. Well, the pepper game, really, I think I, I think it's a loss. I, I love pepper. That's when you get a guy, you get usually pitchers out there. Because that's hit pretty well in the center field, right at Luis Matos. He's there, hauls it in for out number one. So you get a guy, a pitcher, and he'll have five or six of his other pitchers right there. They'll play pepper. I think it's great as far as helping them to become better defensive players out on that mound. And sometimes the pepper games, but you, Darren's right, you, you do tear up the grass there. But I know one thing, you can have some fun. And I just hated it when they brought in no pepper before the games. Well, no, the question is right behind home plate, it's it's posted there, and that's the area they don't want you doing it. They'll let you do it down left field line, right field line, but just not back in front of the dugouts or at home plate. Well, so you know, there's some clubs now that don't allow their teams to play pepper. Oh, yeah, that's definitely true. And I don't understand it. I mean, I've seen, I mean, I've seen some heated pepper games. I mean, some good ones. I've seen where the fights broke out. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be coming down with some rockets on these guys. And <laughs> oh. And when you're playing pepper, you can use, you know, you can direct the ball anywhere you want it to go. And there's some deacon that goes in there. You might have a line of five guys out there, and all of a sudden you, it appears you're going to hit it to the guy on the right, and all of a sudden you just get real quick and hook it to the guy on the left hard, catch him with a shin burger. Meanwhile, it'll cost him a Coke or whatever you're playing for. That's in the center field. So Mark is retired. He's 0 for 2. Mercedes is making this look way too easy. Well, two straight times out against us, he's making it look like uh, this is no problem for him to shut down the number one offense in the American League. Changing speeds, throwing strikes, fastball around 88 to 89. As Ray Durham stands in, but by the time he gets done with you, as we mentioned earlier with that change up, the motion he's got, the very deliberate, deliberate pause at the top, all of a sudden he turns it loose, airs it out, and it looks to be about 95 or 96. Uh, we were talking about it. He hardly backs any pitches up. It's everything's different. He won't throw you. A fastball on the inside corner and then another one right there. He's just not one of those guys that doubles you up very often. He'll throw a fastball inside, a curveball away, change up down and in, fastball up and away. Two and one to count. Trying to figure out a pattern on him has basically been impossible for the White Sox. Now the Sox have only been shut out twice this year. Once here and once on the road. Mercedes in his last start against us through eight strong innings only gave up one earned run and then he went and played and pitched against Kansas City and gave up six earned runs. That's in to left center field. Nobody's going to get that one. Eddie Anderson was playing shallow so that'll go all the way to the wall. And Durham cruises in the second with his 28 two back. Well, let's just keep talking about how we got no chance. Well, you know how when we do that, we put the whammy on the pitcher. There it was. A high fastball. Ray did not try to do too much with it. Went with it. And that two hopper off the fence. Stand up double. But this one two combination. Ray and Jose see if they can back each other up. There's the ball to Jose. He's 0 for 2. Well, right now with 50 extra base hits, Jose has 60. Ray 28 doubles, 8 triples, 14 homers. There's a base hit. Conine gets it. Here's the throw. Ray on the way. Ball gets away from Fordyce. 
So Durham scores. Valentin in the second, and it's a 6 1 ball game. Keep talking, Feisty. Well, Jose does back it up. The one two punch of a leadoff and number two hitter of the White Sox finally gets something going, and just like you said, only been shut out twice. It's going to stay that way. Got a bullet from Jose. And as usual, he gets out and around that ball on the outside corner and hooks it to right field. Jeff Conine up with a strong throw. High over the cutoff man's head, but in between hop, and because of that, Dice can't catch it. He puts a tag on him as if he had the ball, just to see if he would have had him. Yeah, there's a situation where the right fielder does everything right, makes a very strong, accurate throw. Ball takes a bad hop on him right there, comes up, he gets the error. Never did anything wrong. Here's Big Frank. He's 0 for 2. First pitch strike. Why not, Frank? Why not put one on the board quickly? Add to that 390 average with runners in scoring position. Some kind of stat right there. 395 with men in scoring position and two outs. Pitch up and in. Even accounted one. That says two things to me. His concentration just becomes honed in, and the pitchers become a little more worried and make more mistakes. Because you just don't see it with two outs. Somebody can be that successful. Was one of the things that amazed me last year about Chris Singleton. So, and he maintained it throughout the year. As the count goes to three and one. Yeah, Chris's first season in the big leagues was an impressive one. So the Sox on top again in Kansas City with the two outs RBIs. The AL average only 249. 21 points ahead of that. There's a ground ball backhanded by Moore right over the top in time and it'll retire the side but the double by Durham the single by Valentin will go to the seventh trailing by five. <laughs> RBI single by Valentin knocked in Ray Durham who had doubles. Sox finally get on the board as we move to the top of the seventh. It'll be Hairston Moore and Bell to face Mark Burley. Harrison sacrifice bunt fly to center he's fly to right third ball strike here's another email Brian Sharp said he's the biggest Sox fan in the world this one just coming in hot off the whatever they call it internet there's a strike I actually have a question here being only 21 I have been limited to the number of great hitters in Major League history that I've seen personally. Bo Jackson is probably the greatest opposite field home run hitter I've ever seen. Who's the greatest you've ever seen. How about you DJ. Opposite field. The best opposite field home run hitter. Hmm. Well, that I played with. was actually. Probably Fred McGriff. He was a good one. He's right there. I mean, he's right there at the top of all the list. Here's a payoff pitch to Harrison. And he walks it. Third walk issued by Burley, and it'll bring up the shortstop, Melvin Moore. He's one for three, an RBI triple, and a run score. Well, Bo Jackson, for me, had the greatest power to the opposite field of any right hand hitter I've ever seen. Mickey Mantle was an absolute terror to the opposite field. Mickey could hit you. I mean, out anywhere and way back. 
But for a right hand hitter, Bo Jackson was just unbelievable how far he could hit the ball. Jose Canseco, when he first came up, I'll tell you what I saw Canseco do his rookie year with Oakland. At Old Comiskey Park, the first time we watched him take batting practice, in two consecutive pitches, he hit one over the roof in right field and one over the roof in left center field. Yeah, now I saw Canseco when he was younger. Oh, yeah, he used to go the other way. There's one other guy right now in today's game that really launches the other way, and that's Mike Piazza. You know, I've never seen Mike Piazza play a game in person. Well, trust me, he's right there. Oh, I watch him on TV and I see the highlights. And, I mean, Don Drysdale told me about Piazza and the strength in his hands, and all you got to do is watch him swing the bat. Drysdale said he had, without question, the strongest hands he had ever seen in the game of baseball. Well, he is uh, right there with hitting the ball as far as most right handers the opposite way. Maybe not further than Bo, because Bo is basically the strongest guys he ever put on the uniform. But there's never been a stronger human being that ever put on a pair of spikes than Bo Jackson. So I mean, other than that, the one that I played with would be Freddie. He was he was very consistent on hitting balls in the left center field gap over the fence. There's a good strike. Well, Freddie launched them out there as well. Oh yeah, he hit him 420 feet the other way. And the funny thing about Freddie is you really did not notice. He did not swing hard. Just a very fluid, smooth swing, and it was gone. Well, he does not. I'm talking about in the past tense, he's still doing it. The 0 2 pitch. Fastball. Jammed. Souvenir right side. I play with a guy who had great power at left center, Carl Yastrzemski. As a matter of fact, this next email says it's coming from David Holstead from Oregon, Illinois. I vividly remember the 67 pennant race in which four teams vied for the American League pennant. It was a memorable summer. As a member of the Red Sox who went on to win the flag and go on to play the Cardinals in the World Series, what are your memories of that season? Well, David Holstead, when I think about the 67 season, there were four teams who went in one game of each other. That's down low. The White Sox, the Red Sox, the Tigers, and the Twins. The thing that whenever Reflect back on that it was Carl Yastrzemski. Won the triple crown, and I'll tell you what, he's the only guy I've ever played with could hit a five run homer for you. At least that's what the perception was. <laughs> so, in other words, he hit some big ones for you. Oh, I'm telling you. And it didn't, DJ, it didn't make any difference who was out there. He was a left handed hitter. I mean, you get Jim Cott, Sam McDowell, those guys out there. It didn't make any difference. As he's gone, gasses him upstairs. One out. Well, Carl hit 44 home runs that year. He only weighed 178 pounds. We used to weigh in together every day. I was 188, he was 178. And I mean, Carl hit a couple of home runs. I remember when in Cleveland he hit off Sam McDowell. The ball was over 500 feet. How could it have been 500 feet? Nowadays, guy hits one up on the concourse, they say 458 feet. Well, it just goes to show you how strong the strengths were. I don't think they made tape measures long enough back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Albert. He's one for three. Takes a breaking ball strike. That was a great pennant race. A lot of people, a lot of scribes around the country call that the greatest pennant race in baseball history. Breaking ball. One and one. And we got a few more innings here. If you want to email us, email Hawk and DJ, Sox TV at chicagosports.com. Yeah. Albert goes through it. A little bit tardy. Also want to sound a big White Sox hello and 
Get well soon to John Eckert. Our WGN sports crew. John. See you soon big guy. Text it up fouls it off. In 67. That was, Yastrzemski was my first thought. My second thought, unfortunately, was Bob Gibson. I'd say he was good. He beat us three times in that series. We had no chance. There goes the run. There's a throw. Quick release. Right on the money. Beautiful peg by Mark Johnson. That was a quick release right there by Mark Johnson. Good jump by Harrison, but he's going hard, going to go head first, and the tag is going to be right on the hand right there. That's the second time today that Mark has nailed Harrison a second. Well, that's right on the money. It's giddy up there. Bell's gone. He'll grab some bench and that'll retire the side. Seventh inning stretch. We got some work to do. Right now it's time to check out our Miller Lite Major League scoreboard. Final Yankees over the Rangers in the Bronx eight to seven. Tigers leading Mariners seven to three eighth inning at Comerica Park later on. Cleveland hosting Oakland at Jacobs Field and Boston taking on Kansas City. One final in the National League. The Reds at Synergy Field over the Phillies eight to three. They're just getting underway at L.A. Montreal and the Dodgers and later on Tony La Russa's. Cardinals will take on the Braves down at Turner Field in Georgia. So before we start the bottom of the seventh, let's pause for station identification. This is WGN Entertaining America. Along with Darren Jackson, Ken Harrelson from Comiskey Park, final of this two game set in the six game homestand. Sox split the four games with the D Rays and won the first two, lost the last two. They took the opener yesterday, eight to four, and in big jeopardy right here because of this 29-year-old right-hander out of La Romana in the Dominican Republic, Jose Mercedes. That's a beautiful spot. If you ever get a chance to go to La Romana in the Dominican Republic, you got to take advantage of it. It is magnificent. Mags takes first pitch strike. He's over two. You ever been down to La Romana? No, never been to Dominican. One and one to count. No, the only winter ball that I had ever been around was Tijuana for a month. <laughs> for a month. And then they sent me home. They did. Yep. Were you homesick? <laughs> yeah, living in San Diego. How to play right side. Got some activity for the Sox down in the pen. Billy Seamus. You're just tuning in. Kenny Hill started for the Sox. Had a rough outing. Two and a third. Six runs earned. Six hits. Four walks. Three of them scored. The thing about Hill, though, if you miss that outing, was the fact that he just couldn't locate the ball. He had good stuff. He got his fastball up to 94 on a lot of occasions. That's just off the corner. Rocky Biddle doing a little bonding there with Mark Burley. 22 year old right hander. Check the 24 year old right hander and the 21 year old left southpaw. Two two pitch. Mags just getting a piece of it.
Full count. And there's another souvenir. Mercedes again. Making pitches. Keeping the hitters right in between speeds, it seems. Well, he'll do that. And you hit it right on the money right there. He keeps guys in between. Ball hit high and deep and going foul. Right size, wrong shape. Well, as we say, on balls like that right down the line, all you got to do is keep an eye on the hitter and he'll let you know it's fair or foul. If he's still standing there, it's foul. Well, that's when you're at the ballpark. Yeah. Or on replay. Yeah. Jams in this time. Brady Anderson. There's a reminder that the White Sox are playing to win and to help others. Every time the White Sox turn a double play, Van Campen Funds Incorporated will donate $100 to Chicago White Sox charities. Van Campen Funds Incorporated and the Chicago White Sox teaming up for a good cause. Here's Harold. Twice he has gone out to Harrison. One time Jerry made a good play on him as he takes ball one. Tigers now leading Seattle nine to three. It appears Mariners going to lose ten out of their last eleven. That ball hit into center field. Lee Matos, he's a good-looking young center field, 21 years old. And it appears, at least against us in the four games that we saw at Oriole Park at Camden Yards and in here, he reads extremely well. Yeah, he reads the ball off the bat. He usually takes a very good route to it. But I'll tell you, he just seems, when we saw him that first series to now, to keep gaining confidence because they keep putting him out on that field and he's uh, showing he can play. Here's Carlos. Carlos, one for two, picked up our first hit. And that was with one out in the fifth inning. Six, six, and two for Baltimore, one, three, and oh for the Sox. Breaking ball strike. Right back to the middle. C. Lee, El Caballo, two for three. Your pick to click. Got something working here lately. Here's Herbert. Herbert 0 for 2. Nice gap in right center field. Can't get that fastball up and in. Fastball. Jose Mercedes in his career, 19 and 20. After the last two appearances 10 days ago and then this afternoon against us. He 
has looked like a world beater out here. Yeah, it looks like his record should be 30 and 15. Yeah, well, I mean, the way he's pissed against us, it wouldn't surprise you if that was his record. And safe fair. It will. Right on the line. Carlos being waved around as Perry. And the second. And it's a 6 2 ball game. Here come the good guys. That way, Herbert. Two out. RBI. Doing it again. Just keeping it right on the chalk. Let's see where this lands. It's on the chalk or a couple inches fair. Maybe not. Let's not see where it lands. All right, there we go. Right on it. It's like a good ace down the center line, the tennis match. Take him out, Sammy. Get the hook out, man. Come on. Tom Lee and Groom. We're talking about we're just gauging it. Back to back hits again. Last two innings. Keep it going, Chris. Chris, a sacrifice bunt, and he also is flying to center. Gap in right center for Singleton. And that fastball high off the plate. There's a strike, and that evens accounted one. Perry, just a normal lead at second. There's a little flipper, and that's going to fall. So Herbert will score. On the RBI single by Chris, and it's a 6 3 game. All coming with two out, nobody on. Well, there we go. Getting a little love now. Chris going to throw a grenade out there down that left field line. Hargrove coming on out saying, okay, you did a good job. Time to get somebody else in here. But Chris right here jams himself. A little inside out swing. Right, sometimes that's all it takes. You got to go ahead and just put the handle on it. So Jose Mercedes will depart and we'll be back. And there you see Jose Mercedes who did another outstanding job. We just got to him here in the last two innings with a couple of back to back hits. This time around three straight hits drove in two runs here in the bottom of the seventh but another good job by Jose and got a pitching change buddy groom on for the 52nd time he's five and three with the three nine seventy RA four saves forty five and a third forty three hits only four home runs sixteen base on balls and the thirty three strikeouts Buddy groom is going to be featuring a fastball actually he sinks it a slider. A changeup, and he'll cut his fastball also. And he kind of throws across his body, as did John Parrish, last night's starter. Kind of stride a little bit towards that Orioles on deck circle, and then throw back towards home plate. And we're facing Paul Canoco, who came on to, is coming on to hit for Mark Johnson. He's 295, 1472. First pitch. Slider in for ball one. There you see Pauly pinch hitting. He's done an outstanding job. Yes, he has. He's come up with some big base hits. Oh, 
Groom with the fastball just catching the outside corner to go one and one. Chris Ovon first. That's 15 stolen bases. He'll be trying to get himself a jump if he can. There's a chopper. Mora plays second hop, cross in, and a routine out. So Paulie can't come through this time, but Singleton did, and did Lee and Perry. We'll be back in a minute. Sox edging a little closer, picking up a pair, coming with two out, nobody on. Single by Carlos Lee, double by Perry, single by Chris Singleton. As we get set to go to the eighth inning, and a couple of changes for the Sox. Moving in behind the plate for Mark Johnson, it'll be Charles Johnson. And on the mound for Mark Burley, Billy Seamus. So Burley goes four and two thirds. Giving up no runs. One hit. Three walks, three strikeouts. And here's Jeff Conant. Takes up high. Bananas walk scored, single scored, and struck out. There's a breaking ball strike. Count even at one. And here's another email, this one, from Marie O. Subject the name game. There's a base hit right back through the middle. Conine just wears our fannies up. The lead man aboard, and that'll bring up the first baseman, Chris Richard. But the email, this comes from Herbert Perry's uncle Wyatt, that met you in the lobby of the Renaissance Hotel in Tampa recently. Says we've been following the discussion about Herbert's nickname, and we agree with you. Milkman is a great name. And after his work today, you can certainly say the milkman can deliver. In the opinion of many folks from Mayo, Florida, Herbert represents everything that is good about small towns and people who work hard and healthy. Stick with milkman. We already have enough Gators here in Florida. Richard can't get it. Well, there seems to be a bit of a debate. We got the guys here in the locker room calling him Gator and saying that's what it should be. Yeah, but this is family, man. I agree. We got the peop back, people back home saying it should be the milkman. I'm, si I'm siding with them. I like me too. I'm going with Uncle Wyatt. There's a ground ball base hit. Not hit hard. Conine on his way to third, so runners at the corners, nobody out. Here's Fordyce. One for two. A two run single. Back in the third. First pitch strike. Orioles with two in the second. Four in the third. Sox is one in the sixth. Two in the seventh. Get the job done. Deep and right. Mag going back, back, back on the track. He's there, makes the catch. Conine will tag, he'll score. And it's a 7 3 ball game. Third RBI of the day for Fordyce. Dice getting it done. He has uh, stepped it up, especially against the White Sox when we were in Baltimore and now again here. He can hit. There's no question about that. Lewis, two hop. Jose, Ray, and rack him up. 144th double play turned by the Sox. But the O's pick up one. We'll go to the bottom of the eight. Two pops left, trailing by four. There you, 
There you see our Toyota game summary. Orioles seven, Sox three, Mercedes a strong outing. Four dice, three RBIs. Hill, he struggled today. Mark Burley came on and did a good job. That's Ray Durham, takes low for strike one. I'm sorry. Now it's one and one. There you see Jose Mercedes. He out there just getting a little thought process working after the good job that he did. A 2 1 count. See if Ray Durham can get something going here in the bottom of the eighth inning. As he hits a two hopper. Harrison short hops the throw over to Richard. And that is not something we've seen from him. He's made everything look routine. He just kind of sat back, looked a little lackadaisical on that particular throw, and we take advantage of it. Not how many is how. Well, actually, the throw was certainly bad, but certainly. A very, very catchable throw. 